So I want to talk quickly about uh, Prosecco. Uh, so this is Cantine Maschio Prosecco. Most Prosecco is made from the Glera grape. Doesn't mean much to many people. They just know it as Prosecco. Um, but Prosecco can be a simple wine to drink. It's, a, it's considered a simple sparkling wine. There's some shining examples that wouldn't be considered that. But most Prosecco that's readily available is just um, is easy, easily approached. Um, I'm not saying that there's not a lot of care and time that goes into it, but the resulting products are just fun and easy to drink. The great thing about Prosecco is they're really versatile. You can sit around and drink them on the porch. Some people call them a porch pounder. Uh, you can make cocktails out of them. You can make um, you know, a great Sunday mimosa or a Tuesday mimosa if you want. Um, but they're very versatile, so you can drink them on their own. You can use them to make some, co some great cocktails. Um, and another great thing about them is they hold their bubbles for a little bit longer, so you can actually uh, kind of hang on to them a little bit longer. Uh, trust me though, in my house, uh, the Prosecco bottle never lasts more than a night. Um, so anyway, that's Canteen uh, Maschio Prosecco. Uh, and the next wine we have is uh, Kim Crawford Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, this is probably one of the most recognizable Sauvignon Blancs in the world. This happens to be from Marlboro, New Zealand. Marlboro, Marlboro, sorry, is on the South Island of New Zealand, and it's um, probably one of the most well-known areas for Sauvignon Blanc in the world. Um, a couple things about New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc is they're very identifiable just by their nodes. Um, they have uh, notes of, of lime and gooseberry, but New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc um, is very aromatic. It's very highly acidic. Um, it's great to drink on its own. It's really refreshing because of that acidity. Uh, or it's also great to pair with uh, some seafood, especially like uh, oysters. Um, and then typically this or Riesling would be paired with spicy food. So if you have some spicy Thai or spicy Chinese, uh, Sauvignon Blanc goes great with that, especially New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc because of the elevated acidity. So that's Kim Crawford Sauvignon Blanc. So uh, this is a classic Napa Valley Chardonnay. So we have cake bread cellar Chardonnay. Um, a lot of people were have been turned off by California Chardonnay, uh, especially Napa Chardonnay, because of their overuse of oak and malolactic fermentation. Um, that sounds, it's a technical word, but that malolactic fermentation is what produces a butteriness in Chardonnay. Uh, and they were very pronounced in the 1990s and 2000s that people kind of overdid the oak and the butteriness. Uh, this is not one of those wines. It's always been very balanced. Um, and actually a lot of wineries in California are, are kind of trimming back on the oak and the malolactic fermentation because they realize that our, um, as time goes on, our, our taste profiles change. Uh, so this is a classic uh, cake bread cellar Chardonnay. You're going to find it on most wine lists, uh, in especially steakhouses, uh, because it is, it's a bolder style. That doesn't mean that it has a lot of oak and um, butteriness, but it's a bolder style uh, and it'll hold up to a, a wider range of uh, cuisine. So uh, great with our sea bass, you could even have it with a filet and it would stand up to that. So this is Cape Red Cellar Chardonnay. So this is Veuve Clicquot Ponsonnet uh, Champagne. This is a uh, brute from Rems. Um, and this is probably one of the most recognized champagnes in the world. A lot of people call it Veuve Yellow Label. Um, you can see that it's actually a little bit orange and there's actually a a, a color, uh, I'm not a, a graphic designer, but there's a Pantone color for this orange. Uh, but most people just call it Veuve Clicquot Yellow Label. And most people say Veuve Clicquot uh, or Veuve. Um, one thing to notice, it is Veuve and not Veuve. So Veuve, I love Veuve. Uh, but the full name is Veuve Clicquot Ponsardin. Um, that's the Widow Clicquot Ponsardin. Uh, she's the one that um, I don't want to, she didn't invent champagne, but she developed some methods to help improve the production of champagne. Uh, one of the most famous um, people in, in wine history uh, is the Widow Clicquot. Uh, so anyway, this is Vogue Clicquot uh, Pont Sardin, uh, Yellow Label Brut. Uh, so now we have uh, Siduri Pinot Noir. Uh, Siduri is, was started by a guy named Adam Lee, uh, Adam and Diana Lee. Uh, they started in California, but they've since branched out. Um, this is from Willamette Valley. Uh, and it's Pinot Noir. Um, the cool thing about Adam is he, he moved to, um, to California with no knowledge of winemaking, moved from Texas, and um, really wanted to learn how, so he, so he cut his teeth working with some really great wineries, and um, since then started his own label, Siduri, and now produces something like 22 or 24 different Pinot Noirs uh, from all over California and Oregon. Um, but one to be sought after, uh, not to mention Adam's just a cool guy. Uh, I've had the opportunity to have dinner with him a few times and you know what, if 
if you make this wine and you're that cool, then you're all right in my book. So uh, this is Sidori Pinot Noir. So this is uh, Duckhorn Napa Valley Merlot. Uh, Dan Duckhorn started um, Duckhorn Vineyards in 1978 after a trip to Bordeaux. Um, realized that in Bordeaux they were doing some incredible things with Merlot. Uh, most people think that Bordeaux is Cabernet based and they're almost true. The left bank of Bordeaux is mostly Cabernet based. The right bank of Bordeaux is mostly either Cabernet Franc or Merlot based. Um, that being said, there's still Merlot grown in everywhere in Bordeaux. Um, they blend it in, so that's why usually things are called Bordeaux blends. That being said, uh, on his trip he really discovered some great Merlots being grown and produced in, in Bordeaux. So he wanted to come back to Napa Valley and, and try uh, to make his own. So started Duckhorn Vineyards, like I said, in 1978. Uh, it's been going strong ever since then. Uh, this is um, what we would call a blue chip Napa Valley Merlot. Uh, it's made well every year. Um, they even uh, do a, a series called Masters of Merlot where they actually take around the different Duckhorn uh, Merlots that they make and they compare it with Chateau Petrus. Uh, if you don't know, Chateau Petrus is one of the most uh, expensive and rare wines in the world, sometimes up to ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 a bottle. Um, but they actually take their wines and compare it to Petrus. Uh, not to say that one's better than the other, but just to compare different um, styles and similarities between the two. Uh, so anyway, uh, killer Merlot. Uh, this is Duckhorn Vineyards Napa Valley Merlot 2014. Uh, so this is Quilt Napa Valley Cabernet. Uh, this is made by um, Joe Wagner, uh, whose family started Camus Vineyards. Uh, and Joe has simply uh, branched out and started his own wine company called Copper Cane Wines and Provisions. Um, so Joe was uh, looking to make a Cabernet from Napa Valley and was flying uh, over uh, Napa Valley and saw the vineyards. And uh, he said it looks like a patchwork quilt because of how they were laid out and you can actually see that on the, the front of the label how it's patchwork quilt and what he did was he actually selected different vineyard sites from all over the valley i don't know if it's these exact ones that are on here um and was able to pick the cabernet that he wanted the cabernet grapes that he wanted to put into this wine called quilt uh, i believe this is the third vintage it might be the fourth uh, but it's quickly become uh, one of the most popular wines uh, it's actually the number one selling wine at eddie merlot's um, and we, it's, I don't want to say we can't keep it in stock because we can, but um, if they made any less, we probably couldn't. Uh, so kill or wine for the value. Uh, it's usually about 18 to $20 a glass, uh, which sound, may sound like a lot, but it's, um, I'd put that up there against some other wines that you'd see for 30 40 or $50 a glass. So uh, pretty killer wine.